Live from the Fairmont Hotel in San Jose, California, it's The Cube at Big Data SV 2015. Welcome back, everybody. You're watching theCUBE. We're live here at Big Data SV. It's Big Data Week in San Jose, California. Uh, I'm joined by John Kreiss, who's the VP of Strategic Marketing at Hortonworks, and Chris Tugut, who's the VP of Product and Services Marketing at Teradata. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, Both thanks. Uh, frequent guests. Loved having you back. Thanks for coming. Um, so we were just talking a little bit uh, off air. Obviously, we've got Hadoop World going on. Uh, what are your impressions? You guys have been at the show. Um, there's a good vibe there. What's, what's going on? Why don't we start with you. Yeah, I think there's, uh, you know, it is a good vibe. I, I think there's a, a lot of uh, great activity. I mean, you know, customers out there looking for solutions. Mm -hmm. I think customers really trying to solve some of the core issues that they have around metadata and security and around how do I kind of, you know, get my infrastructure ready to go and ready to scale and really, you know, get get big data pervasive mm -hmm. in the marketplace. So I think it's got a it's got a good buzz to it. Yeah, it's uh, from from talking to some of the other guests who've come through. They said it's um, you know starting to see more focus on move to the applications a little bit more than some of the the, the, the infrastructure. So that's yep. kind of tells you that the market's moving uh, in the right direction. Um, but why don't we talk a little bit about the relationship Hortonworks and Teradata? So you guys have been partners now for for quite a while. I think yep. Hortonworks was your first uh, Hadoop partner, really, yep. uh, Chris. Uh, talk a little bit about, maybe just kind of take a step back, tell us a little bit about how the relationship developed and uh, maybe we can talk about where we are today. Yeah, no, that'd be great. I mean, we started this, uh, this relationship about three years ago. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, you know, it's really based upon a foundation around how can we really extend the value of the ecosystem to, to our customers, right, with all this idea about big data and volumes of data and, and, and how can we work together in a, you know, joint development model mm -hmm. to really bring value. And so, We've done a lot of this. I mean, we've mm -hmm. integrated with Viewpoint, which is our single plane of glass to be able to you know, monitor and administer mm -hmm. you know, the Hortonworks uh, HDP. We've deployed mm -hmm. a, a joint appliance yep. and mm -hmm. happy to have customers in a broad range of yep. industries with that. I mean, in manufacturing and retail and mm -hmm. finance and really as a way for people to have the fastest time produ to production. Yep. Really being able to bring it in, deploy it, ready to run, and it's got you know pre-configured HDP set up, mm -hmm. you know, and they're really able to get up and running, you know, very very quickly. And then we've again continued to innovate. You know, if we look at the innovation that HortonWorks brought together with H Catalog, mm -hmm. you know, in our first introduction with SQL H, and then yep. extending that to Query Grid and you know pushing down. So it's been a, yep. I mean, it's been a great relationship, not just from a technology perspective, but I think also just from a. Uh, a go to market and a philosophy and you know our management teams work mm -hmm. uh, work really well together mm -hmm. so i think it's been yeah. great no i would agree i'd echo that i think the uh yeah, the, the engineering, joint philosophy around engineering the technologies together in order to provide additional value for the mm -hmm. customers. As Chris said, really making sure that um, they can utilize both infrastructures in a way that really benefits them the most. And I think Teradata really has leaned in from the very beginning in terms of having an engineering relationship with us and making sure that that, that was always a very tight connection yeah. between two technologies. You mentioned you know, on, on previous segments how it's a, the, the, these partnerships are very much engineering driven. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they work their way up the, the, the latter after that, but they start really very much at, a, at an engineering uh, level. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe could both of you talk about what, is it, what does that look like on the ground? What, when we talk about tight engineering partnerships, sure. um, what does that practically look like? Sure, and I can start. I mean, I think that it starts with you know commitment by both uh, engineering teams and product management teams, right? So it's not just the engineers, but also those that are making the plans for where and the roadmaps for where the products are going. Need to you know meet regularly, have uh, joint planning meetings, synthesize the roadmaps in a way that would drive the most benefit mm -hmm. for the customer. So Chris mentioned a couple of Query Grid and the integration with H Catalog and those kinds of things. Early on, Embari integration um, into you know, into Viewpoint. It, it's really those teams working together to to synchronize releases and synchronize development schedules and roadmaps um, in order to bring value to the customer. Mm -hmm. And I would I would echo that. I think it it uh, it is those quarterly engineering meetings where we get engineering leadership together, and yeah. it is mm -hmm. it is syncing roadmaps, but it's also saying. All right, where are you going fundamentally, Hortonworks, and Teradata, where are you going fundamentally, and how can we leverage the skills of each organization to bring you know, value to the marketplace? And really an extension of that, I mean, all of the acquisitions that we've done, you mm -hmm. know, with Revolitics and Loom, mm -hmm. with Rainstore and the archiving mm -hmm. solution, mm -hmm. both of those running on top of uh, HTP, yep. you know, with the Think Big acquisition that we did, really services around yep. 
um, what can be done within Hadoop and sure. specifically mm -hmm. HDP and how we deploy data lakes in the marketplace. So, you know, we're continuing to build on those early days mm -hmm. and then bringing mm -hmm. it, uh, mm -hmm. you know, to market. I think it's those sure. core engineering meetings that uh, really help us sit down and map out where we each can bring significant mm -hmm. value add in the relationship. Yeah. And how does that, such tight integration help, uh, Terry, as we've talked before about one of the value adds that you're bringing to your customers is, is helping enterprises kind of bring this all together so that you can integrate kind of the, the data warehouse with Hadoop with some of the other new approaches into a comprehensive platform that you can actually leverage, you know, get the most from your data wherever it happens to live. How does the engineering partnerships uh, help you kind of deliver on that? Well, because not only do we build out engineering, but we also make sure that these things are very performant. Yep. I mean, just recently, uh, we did a, um, we both won a joint customer. It happens to be an internet uh, customer mm -hmm. in the publishing space. And they actually said, look, I want to see how Teradata and uh, the Hortonworks works well together. And we deployed Query Grid within that environment. And we literally uh, were able to ingest a query through Teradata we pushed it down to a billion row table sitting inside of Hortonworks, processed it, delivered a 10 million record back, joined it with the rest of the data, and that whole thing happened in like six seconds. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the reality is it's the high speed, parallel, tight integration, and mm -hmm. the dynamic and flexible mm -hmm. deployment of how we bring these solutions mm -hmm. together. So it's almost like they're mm -hmm. not two different solutions that kind of meld together to solve mm -hmm. the customer's problems. Well, I would add, sorry, it's yeah. just that the, the reuse of skills, so the fact that you can have the skills in the, you know, in the data warehouse and, and be able to run those jobs, as Chris said, and push it down into the, to the Hadoop infrastructure without having to know the details of where that sits um, also helps accelerate the adoption of, of the technology mm -hmm. through, the, you know, through the unified data architecture and through the kind of jointly agreed to vision of how it'll be integrated and how the customers can best consume it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've often said, you know, business users don't care. Is the data sitting in Teradata? Is yeah. it sitting mm -hmm. in Horton and, and Hadoop? They don't care. They yeah. just want to be able to run a query right. and get an answer back. And I think together, we're able to help mm -hmm. solve those problems. Well, and, and that's a really good point. And in this world that we're living in today, it requires, uh, I think, for kind of new business models from on the vendor side. Um, you know, where Horton works, you know, you kind of, the partnership and open DNA is, it was kind of born in, in uh, it was in your DNA upon birth, whereas, mm -hmm. you know, Teradata and some of the other companies that are coming from, that have a much longer legacy. Um, is, is it a challenge to kind of adopt, adapt, I should say, to these new kind of more open business model where you've got to co co cooperate um, uh, with different vendors to really help each other drive value and essentially open up the market? You know, from a Teradata perspective, not really, because it's interesting, you know, Teradata, we've always been a player in the marketplace that says we want to optimize with best of breed technologies out there. Like, we've never had our own BI tool or our mm -hmm. own data integration tool. We've always had best of class integration with, you know, Informatica's and the Talons and best in class integration with the Tableaus and MicroStrategies and mm -hmm. Business Objects. And, you know, frankly, a lot of those companies have been absorbed by mm -hmm. others that you would consider our competitors. So this has really been, you know, core to our strategy is just do best in class mm -hmm. integration and then allow customers to choose. You know, what is the best solution for you in the marketplace? And we extend that, mm -hmm. you know, into the, into the Hadoop environment. So it's worked well for us and I think it continues to work well. Yeah, I mean, case in point is the open data platform where, um, you know, which is the big news of the week, mm -hmm. um, essentially trying to help standardize and, and uh, push adoption of Hadoop into the enterprise. Yep. Uh, you know, Hortonworks, of course, one of the founding members as well as Teradata. Uh, talk a little bit about that organization and kind of together, where do you see that going? Yep, so I'll say, you know, just one thing to make sure it's, it's clear, the open data um, platform uh, initiative is really about driving the consumption side. It's mm -hmm. not about disintermediating intermediating any of the other components. Of course, still continue to do all the upstream development in, in ASF and, mm -hmm. and work through those, uh, those appropriate mechanisms. The, the ODP is really about um, helping drive the consumption and pr providing a common core for consumption by enterprises so that you know, really the ecosystem has something that they can work together and work around a common mm -hmm. core. And so it's something that will work very closely with Teradata as we have. We have a great long-term engineering relationship. And I think this is something that just sort of shows how we have already been working together now and we'll continue to work forward, uh, work together mm -hmm. going forward. Yeah, I, I think the uh, Open Data Platform Initiative is really strategic. And we talked a bit about it before, right? I think, you know, certainly Hadoop is open, but it is fragmented, right? Is mm -hmm. you have different, uh, distributions popping up and starting to add different value add. And as we look at this space, I mean, our strategy is to really make it simple um, around helping to manage the broader analytical ecosystem. And if you have standards and APIs and integration, not only does that make it easier for Teradata, but it makes it easier for our customers to integrate and, and adopt. And I agree with 
what John's saying is it's really all about the consumption layer, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and it is all about driving adoption of open source. I think there's some people that have read about this and are like, well, this is gonna be a closed source thing and vendors and they're gonna take control. For me, this is not about control of anything. It's about furthering the consumption, the yeah. usage of the technology into a broader you know, environment. And so I'm, I'm excited about the initiative mm -hmm. and I think it'll be good for the industry mm -hmm. and I think it'll be good for customers. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, speaking of customers, so let's talk about what you're seeing among your joint customers. What, mm -hmm. what are some of the um, more common or, or more valuable use cases you're seeing among uh, Hortonworks and Teradata joint customers? Chris. Yeah, I'll say one of the, the biggest uh, drivers from a joint customer perspective is this notion of a data lake. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it is a bit of, a, of an evolution. You know, we talk about how early uh, on deployments around Hadoop were typically in lines of business, right? But this, this idea about a data lake um, really is an architectural pattern for bringing in data in its original fidelity from a broad set of sources and then being able to you know, understand and consume it and then have different users you know, accessing it, I think is, is really something that's needed in the marketplace. I mean, even with Teradata, right, as a data warehouse, we never took data in its original fidelity, right? We would mm -hmm. take data, we would transform it, and then we would put it in. We always put relevant data <laughs> into mm -hmm. Teradata, and we'll continue to do that. The data lake is about consuming all of the data. Some of it might not be relevant today, some of it might be mm -hmm. relevant tomorrow, but having it there that can be used and refined and consumed is an important dimension. So we see a lot of customers really on the verge of deploying data lakes in a, in a really strong way, but there's still a bit of evolution in terms of things that need to be done around mm -hmm. governance and, and metadata and security and mm -hmm. archiving, because all of the core you know, data management rules still apply to data lakes as they do to data warehouses. Yep. Mm -hmm. No, I would agree. I think that you know, it is an evolution, you know, a, a, a journey to get all the way to a data lake. You know, it'll start with, as Chris said, one or two use cases, potentially in different uh, business units, and they'll ultimately get to that pattern. I mean, a good example of you know, where somebody can get to, there's a large retailer that we have as a, as a joint customer, who their goal is to get to a kind of a golden record, a 360 degree view of the customer that encompasses a lot of the other data types and at the, at the full fidelity, um, yet leveraging all the different components mm -hmm. in order to get that, that view of the customer whether it's the operational side or you know the, the other ways that they might interact with the customer, social or loyalty cards and those kinds of things. So this large retailer, that was their goal, was to use you know, Hadoop to land the data at, a, at, a f at the absolute level of fidelity, mm -hmm. but integrate it and, and utilize the other technologies they had, including Teradata mm -hmm. technologies, in order to get that kind of common view, mm -hmm. single view of the customer and exploit that. Well, I think it, that's, it's an important point to make that uh, this kind of the new world of Hadoop is not necessarily uh, competing directly with the data warehouse world. I mean, there's going to be some some overlap, and there's going to be some competition there, which makes this market, you know, interesting, and exciting from yeah. an analyst perspective. Mm -hmm. But it's also about helping com companies and uh, your customers get more value out of the investment they've made in Teradata. Absolutely. Because now you can move some of that data that mm -hmm. you couldn't, you wasn't practical to either store or process, and, and bring that into a Teradata environment where you can actually do some more of the uh, types of analysis and put it into mission critical reports that you're already mm -hmm. running. So, mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that's important, you know, to point out. Um, so going forward, what's you know to the extent you can share, what's what's on the joint roadmap uh, between Teradata and, and HortonWorks? What are some of the things you're you're working on, and you're you know if we're here at this table next year, what are some of the things you think we'll be talking about? Yeah. Well, I think together we'll be really solving some of the the core challenges around the data lake. You know, like I said, data lake is a is a really good architectural pattern, but there is some maturity that we need mm -hmm. to drive uh, inside of the Hadoop infrastructure to be able to really you know, capitalize on the value of having a data lake that can really scale. And I think that that has uh, dimensions of you know, need for doing metadata and data lineage and data wrangling and self-service. And you know, we announced, as we talked about, uh, Teradata Loom. Mm -hmm. And that plays a key role running on top of HDP. Mm -hmm. We think you know, archive and some of these things that, frankly, people have not been thinking about within Hadoop. But if you have an, if you have an infrastructure that you're using in a consistent way and you need to make sure that you archive and you back mm -hmm. it up and mm -hmm. you've got something that has high compression. Mm -hmm. So some of the stuff that we've done with our acquisition of Rainstore. Mm -hmm. And then continuing to drive uh, activity with Think Big yeah. uh, to optimize data lakes. Because it's not just about the software, it's also about services to make sure that they're applying the right kind of principles. Mm -hmm. yep. And uh, Think Big's been doing this for four years with over a hundred different implementation, so we'll mm -hmm. be working closely together in, in those areas, just continue to build it out around yep. the value add, but also in terms of a go-to-market yep. model. We think a data lake is a great architectural pattern, and we think 
all of our customers should have one, and we're going to work to go help drive that. Yeah, no, I would totally agree and, and echo that. And you know, the the companies that Teradata has acquired were partners of Hortonworks already, um, ones that we were already starting to work mm -hmm. with. You know, under the Teradata umbrella, it gives us a chance to work even in an even deeper uh, engineering relationship. Loom is a good example with the uh, data governance initiative that we have. You know, getting getting Teradata to help integrate that technology even deeper into the platform to solve some of those you know, issues that, that you know, the enterprise are looking to do as they expand their deployments into this data lake-like pattern. So um, they, are, they are real issues. They're ones that the customers are asking us to make sure we solve, and I think that's one that we can solve mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned acquisitions, and uh, which, you know, would like to kind of get your take on what is the acquisition strategy at Teradata? When do you look to make acquisitions around? <laughs> Chris? Around, well, around. Let me tell you the next three that we're going to do. <laughs> yeah, tell me the next three. But acquisition strategy around. Nice try, Jeff. <laughs> Got to try, right, folks? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but around acquiring versus partnering. Um, yeah. Do you look at, is there core areas where you need to, this is something Teradata needs to be, bring into the Teradata fold, whereas these are areas where we need to partner. Oh, yeah. how do you, how, that's what I meant about how do you look at that. If you want to share the next video, yeah, yeah, feel free. <laughs> no, no, I think uh, it's a really good question. And, and I actually think if you look at the ones we've acquired, it fits very well into our strategy. I mean, a lot of people don't know this. I mean, Teradata does well over a billion dollars in the services in this marketplace. So it's not surprising for us to go extend in terms of think big and have services around open source and emerging technologies. When you look at some of the core competencies that we've had in terms of bringing you know, optimizers and SQL engines to the marketplace to run at scale and MPP. I mean, typically what we do is we look at, okay, where's a core competency that Teradata has, and then how can we extend that core competency mm -hmm. with acquisitions that you know, fit well into what we do? You know, there, we don't spend a lot of time you know, looking at and acquiring companies that have BI tools and visualization mm -hmm. and front end, or DI tools. That was never part of our strategy, mm -hmm. but, but technologies that surround the core infrastructure and make it easier to manage and simpler, and technologies that bring the analytical ecosystem better together, you'll absolutely see us uh, continue to invest in those mm -hmm. areas. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I, I had to try, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, well, um, thanks so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Um, you know, congratulations on your success together. You guys are doing some good work. Uh, congratulations on the ODP, and yeah, we'll be, we'll be watching. This is a really exciting market, and uh, we'll be watching closely, and we'll see what those next uh, acquisitions Sounds may or may not be. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with our next segment here live at Big Data SV in San Jose right after this.